Let's try another example. So let's say the price of a good increases from $500 to $600. The quantity demanded is going to decrease from $920 to $900. What is the price elasticity of demand coefficient? So actually erase the formula here. So we got the percentage change in quantity demanded. over the percentage change in price. That's the formula for the coefficient. So let's first, step one, calculate that percentage change in quantity demanded. And basically what it's going to be is the absolute value of the change in quantity. So it's going from 920 to 900. So notice that the quantity demanded is going down. So we'd have the absolute value of negative 20. And that's going to be divided by the average of these two numbers, or the midpoint between the two numbers. So it's going to be 900 plus 920 divided by 2. We can easily tell that it's going to be 910 in this case. But sometimes you may get some numbers where it's not so obvious. So I'm just going to keep rewriting the formula just to get you used to it. So this would be 20 over 910. And when you do this, you'd get approximately 0.022 if you round it to three decimal places. Okay, so that's the percentage change in quantity demanded. So I'm going to write that number up here. Okay, and now what we got to do, step two, is calculate that percentage change in price. And again, that's going to be the absolute value of the change in price. So it's going from 500 to 600. So that change in price is 100. And it's already positive. We don't have to put the absolute values. And then the midpoint between 500 and 600 is 550. But the formula is you add them divided by 2. So we would get 100 over 550, which would be approximately 0 0.18 when you do it in your calculator. I'm going to round it to two decimal places. So that would go over here. And when you do this calculation, you'd end up getting 0 0.12 approximately for the price elasticity of demand coefficient. Notice that the coefficient is less than 1, and so this good between these points on the demand curve is classified as inelastic. So it's not too sensitive to change in prices. So notice that the change in price was 18%, but the percentage change in quantity was only 2%. Okay, so it gets classified as inelastic. So just two different examples of different classifications where you could have elastic or inelastic. Remember, if the numerator and denominator are the same, if you end up getting one here, then that good is unit elastic or unitary. And then we also showed how no matter which scenario we're dealing with, whether the price of the good is increasing and the quantity demanded is decreasing or vice versa, in the previous example, the price decreased and the quantity increased, we're always going to get positive values for this coefficient, and it's because of the, that uh, absolute value in both of these two respective formulas.